Hello everyone. Question number seven, part one is three upon x plus four y is equal to seven. Here, there is very important aspect. If I take x as the LCM, then this term will become four x y. So this has been converted to another term four x y, which is basically a quadratic term, not a linear term. So in this case, what we can do is we can take one upon x as a value t. So when I take the value of one upon x as another variable t, so this will become three t plus four y is equal to seven, and the second equation will become five t plus six y is equal to thirteen. So now this has remained as the linear equation itself. I multiply the first equation by five and multiply the second equation by three. So the first equation becomes fifteen t plus twenty y is equal to thirty five, and the second equation will become fifteen t plus eighteen y is equal to thirty nine. Subtracting the two equations, this can be cancelled out. So the value of two y will become minus four, and the value of y will become minus. As we have solved the value of y as minus two, I am putting it in the simplified form of the equation. It is three t plus four into y that is minus two is equal to seven. So three t will become seven. This minus eight when go on the right hand side becomes plus eight. So three t becomes fifteen, and the value of t becomes five. As the value of t has come out to be five, I can put it in this. Uh, Value where one upon x is already t, so one upon x is equal to five, and the value of x becomes one upon five. So this is the better way of solving this equation. If I look at part two of question number seven, again here it were one upon y and one upon y. So it's always benefit that we take one upon y as any constant like t, and in the last we replace the value of t with one upon y. So the first equation will be 5x minus 9 is equal to t, which can be written as 5x minus t is equal to 9 as the first equation. The second equation automatically is x plus t is equal to 3 because we know we have taken the value of 1 upon y as t. So either we multiply the first equation by a negative sign or we can directly add them. Add these two equations. When I'm adding these two equations, they can be cancelled out by themselves. So it is 6x. Now we are adding; we are not subtracting. Keep this in mind. Is equals to 12, and the value of x becomes 2. When I put the value of x to in this equation, it is 5 multiplied by 2 minus 9 is equals to t. So 10 minus 9 is equals to t, and the value of t becomes 1. As we know, the value of t is 1. We have substituted 1 upon y as t. So here we can replace the value of t as one, and one upon y will become one, and the value of y will come out to be one. So whenever there is any fractional form where the variable x or y is given in denominators, it is always better to substitute it as some other variable, and in the end we replace the variable with the substitution. Here. It's already given in the right format. Here, p and q are taken to be a constants or the coefficients of x and y, and x and y are known as variable. Here, it is already written that we have to solve it by elimination method. But we have to keep one thing in mind that which two terms we have to solve the value for. Here, we know that we have to solve the value of x and y, but we can also solve the value of p and q by Taking x and y as the coefficients, so here I multiply the first equation by q and the second equation by p, so that the coefficient of x becomes p q in the first equation and p q in the second equation. So the first equation becomes p q x plus q square y is equal to p minus q multiplied by q, and the second equation will become. P Q X minus P square Y is equals to P plus Q multiplied by P. When I solve this, the coefficient of X is P Q in the first equation and P Q in the second equation. They can be cancelled out. 
Now, if I am subtracting the two equation, it becomes q square y plus p square y is equals to pq minus q square, this multiply by 2, minus p square minus 2 or pq. This p2 can be cancelled out by p2. So here it becomes y in the bracket p square plus q square is equal to minus in the bracket p square plus q square. So the value of y becomes minus of p square plus q square upon p square plus q square which can be cancelled out and up comes out to be left to as minus 1. As we have calculated the value of y as minus 1, we can put it in the first equation. So px minus the value of y already 1, so it is minus q is equals to p minus q. Minus q can be cancelled out by minus q. So the value of x comes out to be p upon p and that is 1. So this way we can solve the value of x and y. The value, the value of y comes out to be minus 1 and the value of x comes out to be plus 1. In this equation, again, first of all we have to write in the right format. First equation, I am taking a, b, l, c, m. It comes out to be px minus a, y is equals to 0. If a, b is multiplied by 0, it comes out to be 0. So the first equation is bx minus a, y is equals to 0. And the second equation is ax plus b, y is equal to a square plus b square. So the coefficient of x is b in the first equation and a in the second equation. Multiply the first equation by a and the second by b. So the first equation becomes a b x minus a square y is equals to 0. And the second equation will become a b x plus b square y is equals to a square plus b square. Again, if I am subtracting the two, it comes out to be can be can be cancelled out. It is minus a square y minus b square y is equals to again this is in brackets so it is minus a square minus b square when I take y common it comes out to minus a square minus b square multiplied by y is minus a square minus b square so the value of y becomes a square minus b square upon minus a square minus b square because both are same we can cancel it out comes out to be 1 we can put the value of y as 1 in the first equation, so x upon a minus 1 upon, the value of y is 1, 1 upon b is equal to 0. So x upon a is equal to 1 upon b or the value of x becomes a upon b. So this way we can solve the value of x and y. If in case you have any problem, you can contact us or email us. And in the next class, we will talk about the question number 9 and 10. Thank you.